Aptera just confirmed what a lot of us were suspecting was the case. At least for the launch edition, all-wheel drive is out. So if you have a launch edition Aptera on order, they've already said they're switching everybody's orders automatically to front-wheel drive and will provide guidance down the road if you would rather wait for the all-wheel drive model. But that's kind of the cool part is they did mention they still have plans on doing an all-wheel drive version of the Aptera down the road. It just doesn't really make sense right now because if you see how the whole vehicle tapers off on the back and of course because it's a three-wheeler I don't think they're gonna be able to fit a traditional drive unit in the back they can fit one in the front though thankfully in that nose cone area and for all the reasons I mentioned in my previous video about the Aptera motor switching to something a bit more traditional which we now know it is the Vitesco EMR3 drivetrain which is a very proven already out onto the market almost a million EVs on the road already have this motor and it's honestly quite powerful compared to the hub motor motors that they were planning on using originally but again this simplifies things I wouldn't be shocked if it makes it a little bit cheaper for them at least and also safety wise I could imagine a lot of concern about what happens if you shear off one of those outward mounted wheels it could be potentially dangerous to have outward facing high voltage wiring going that far out the vehicle now you don't have to worry about that because the drive unit is just right in front of you having driven the Aptera prototype with the hub motors myself that one was crazy fast the game a prototype was all-wheel drive and those hub motors they were using in the prototype at least equaled out to around 127 kilowatts at peak output whereas even though the Aptera is now front-wheel drive instead of all-wheel drive the EMR3 motor actually can output 150 kilowatts which means that yes technically on the drive unit level the Aptera is gonna be more powerful with one motor than it was gonna be with the previous three except of course much more simple to integrate because the inverter and everything is already baked in you don't have to have all that additional high voltage wiring. Chris McCammon also dropped some little nuggets of detail in the Discord after this announcement went live, saying that the EMR3 drive unit technically is actually a little lighter than the in-wheel motors they were going to use. Again, wouldn't be shocked if that has something to do with less wiring. And some cool things about this drive unit is even though it's an off-the-shelf component, again, that's been tested, it's been proven, it's in nearly a million other EVs on the road today, Aptera still owns the software for the VCU, also known as the Vehicle control unit which means that they can improve the driving dynamics they can change the way the motor behaves with over-the-air software updates so you could have it drive a certain way when you first get it and they could improve it find a way to make it more efficient or perform differently in different circumstances like you could have a bad weather mode where it detects slippage a little bit differently or you could have a track mode where perhaps the motor doesn't care about traction control and just goes full speed to skid out the tires if you're just trying to have fun around a racetrack or something crazy those kinds of things they can add via over-the-air update which is really fun and exciting to know and when people in the discord ask Chris like please don't create track mode or acceleration improvements with this drive unit that you charge extra for and he said never like I don't know how much control he has over the company but I was just very happy to see how he feels about the product saying that Aptera is never gonna charge you extra for unlocking the performance via a software update I'm sure a wheel drive will probably cost more more down the road and probably be much faster but I'm pretty sure it's mainly gonna be an issue of traction control because while the Aptera launch edition is now gonna be front-wheel drive because that motor is so powerful you know it's around 200 horsepower for a vehicle that weighs only about 2,000 pounds this thing is still gonna pull pretty hard and I think probably the limiting factor for how fast this thing can go from 0 to 60 is purely gonna be based on the grip of the tires and that of course would be better if it was all-wheel drive but again most of the wheels in the Aptera are in the front. You've got two up there and one in the back. So my guess is this thing is still going to rip. It's still going to be absurdly quick, especially for a vehicle this small and this efficient. So I wouldn't worry if you were really hoping for all wheel drive simply because you wanted a fast vehicle. My prediction is the front wheel drive is still going to be absurdly quick and faster than most people need to go. And while there was a lot of concerns in the community about, well, isn't this going to delay production now they have to change a bunch of the design? I think Aptera squashed a lot of those concerns by saying that the PI2, which has been in development for a while, you know, it's a production intent build and they've already got parts showing up to the factory for it right now. They said it should be assembled and driving around by the end of August, so within a matter of weeks. That one is already designed to incorporate the EMR3. In my opinion, that's an indication that they've already been prepping for this. You know, they don't have to fundamentally change the exterior, the body and carbon. All that stuff is already prepared and ready to accommodate for an inboard motor 
which is already pretty small and compact. Some people were curious why they didn't select the EMR4, which is another motor made by the same company, just slightly newer, but Aptera has said that this one's more expensive and also a little bit larger. So because they want to go with a more tested, well-proven out powertrain that's already on the market, plus they want to find one that's more affordable, ready for scaling up production, and one that can fit within the existing Aptera design, that's why they selected the EMR3, which makes a lot of sense to me. But yeah, I also try to remind people that Aptera, when they first started way back in 2007, that was going to be a hybrid. That one definitely didn't have hub motors. It was going to be an onboard motor anyway, and the exterior of that initial Aptera 2E, they called it, was very, very similar to the Aptera we see today. So I don't think that it's actually as big a change as a lot of people were anticipating. My guess is that manufacturing-wise, it actually simplifies a lot to not have that additional wiring. Now you don't have the unsprung weight. Your powertrain is not going to be shaking around all day. My original Aptera reservation, if you guys recall back when I ordered one, was front wheel drive because I believed for the vast majority of circumstances, the front wheel drive would be lighter and it would be more efficient. It's simpler. It's probably easier to maintain, easier to build, which I'm all in favor of. And knowing that they're already going to be prototyping with the EMR3 with the PI2, and of course the PI3, PI4 is a great sign in my opinion that showcases that Aptera has had this design in mind for a while. They were just waiting on the official confirmation from Vitesco to actually be able to share it. So this is not a last second, last minute change. This is something they've been aware of how to fix for a long time. And even if it sacrifices on legroom a little bit, trust me, when I sat in the Aptera, there was an absurd amount of legroom. You also don't have to worry about sliding those seats all the way to the back because there's no second row. So they could easily sacrifice, in my opinion, six inches to a foot of legroom if that's what's needed to accommodate for the motor. But they said the zero to 60 time will be officially confirmed with the PI2 once they rig it up to have full power and the production intent battery pack, which should be within the next couple of months. But we're talking six to eight weeks here. They'll be able to actually do some launches with it, fine tune it, figure out how to deliver the right amount of power to not make those tires slip. But even if the tires slip, man, this thing is going to be fast. This thing's going to be crazy fun. And to those concerned about traction control and driving around in the snow, personally, I think way too many people are looking at all wheel drive as the end all be all for driving in the winter. When in reality, I think a lot of it comes more down to tires than it does whether or not you have all wheel drive. Like my mom, for example, drives around her Hyundai Azera. It's from 2007. It's front wheel drive. It's definitely not some all wheel drive off road machine, but she lives an hour away from Canada and drives it through the snow for several months out of the year and they just have snow tires for it. So while I understand people want all wheel drive for the Aptera for the traction control and the acceleration and all that, just keep in mind that the Alafe motors had not been proven. It was going to delay the production even further, which I don't think would have been a happier ending for any of us. Plus, because it's untested powertrains and it's untested motors, there's a very real chance that they could have rushed it, like mass produced it, shipped a bunch of Aptera with it, and then discovered a bunch of problems down the road that they couldn't find in testing. Because even if you have 10 prototypes driving a thousand miles a month, that's substantially less miles than what Vitesco has already tested and calibrated with the EMR3 with almost a million EVs on the road already driving around with it. So I think they're making the right call and they are still doubling down on wanting to work with Alafe, wanting to have hub motors down the road, but don't be surprised if they keep the EMR3 for the front wheel drive and they just add a hub motor to the back because that keeps things simpler. You don't have to route so much externally mounted high voltage wiring. And again, this EMR3 is going to be pretty crazy powerful as is. So I don't think there's likely going to be a lot of motivation or reason to ever actually build an Aptera with three motors. It's a 2,000 pound vehicle. Do you really need a tri-motor system for that? There's lockers and stuff in the EMR3, so I'm sure they're going to fine-tune it and calibrate it to make it as safe and as fast and as fun as possible. So I think they're making all the right calls, but what did you guys think of the drivetrain update? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos, so thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.